Welcome to The Hook, number 29. This week's MLR News and Notes. And that's week number eight. So, uh, going back into Major League Rugby, this last week we had the historic first MLR on MLR Crime. And by that, we had the NOLA Gold Rugby Club traveling by way of autobus from New Orleans to the Houston metropolitan area. Uh, they met up with the Sabercats at Sugarland Constellation Field for a bout of punching and blitzing. Sort of like a, a dance in the ring. Pretty much, to be honest. It was, it was a bit of a boxing match for a while. Uh, uh, Sabercats beat NOLA with their blitz defense 30-12 in the first match against an MLR side between any of the clubs involved. Uh, you will see a lot of the blitz defense also from New Orleans. They used the blitz defense, which kept, uh, you know, the Sabercats really, like, on edge. A bit different uh, way and style than what Nyack was doing in there. Sabercats' defense was a bit different. Uh, Coach Fitzpatrick installed the Blitz defense system for use uh, against the Nola Gold. He really wanted to start pressuring the opponent's attack, so which is what we saw. Um, how that works is like you have to have, like, have good set piece defense to draw in uh, offensive players so that they have greater width and less ability on the offensive side of the ball. Um, try scorers for New Orleans were Vince Jobo and Eric Howard. Vince Jobo, man, he made this beautiful try off of three phases right off of the line out. And, you know, that, that guy's an all-world athlete himself uh, out of the Cheetahs system in South Africa. Uh, Eric Howard, Canadian hooker. Uh, national team pool player. Uh, I, I have no idea why this guy is not in the ARC camp right now. This is the guy that is the next hooker for Canada. And, you know, Ray Barkwell, love you, man, but you are not an 80-minute player. And you probably know it, and you're probably going, why are they making me play 80 minutes, man? I can play 55. <laughs> like, so, um, Eric Howard scores, you know, I think it was like a a muffled line out as it were he grabbed it and he just went and touched it down uh however that pretty much left uh jp loft only converted once so that really only uh, that that was it for the offense um for sabercats uh sam windsor malachi asdale and osea kalenisau all scored malachi asdale twice and sam windsor was good for conversions twice and two penalties um so you know they they did what they wanted to do on defense the difference really is was in more or less the forward play you see uh you know a young monster prop in uh you know pat mullet and you're wondering get into this a little bit later is like this guy is probably the best prop talent we have right now uh, at Tighthead, domestically available. Based on everyone I've seen, he is there. Uh, who is of people who have not been called into uh, an Eagles camp at all. So he has been a high school All-American. So he was on the high-performance radar at one point. But he beat... <sighs> He beat up uh, Hubert Biden's uh, a bit, uh, you know. So, and that's just, you know, how they were playing the dark, like the dark arts and pushing, like pushing each other around. I think Nola, to an extent, really, they achieved enough parity to where they could run their offense. If the difference was the the defenses for both of these teams were just so hard hitting. Uh, the reality was, it seemed that based on the radio broadcast that. Uh, the tackle rate was, uh, you know, more successful based on uh, what Houston was able to do, and then hit the gaps when it wanted when they wanted to. Um, 
So that brings us to uh, the other big match of the weekend, which was the Eagles beating Brazil 16-45 to down in Brazil. Uh, oh, man. I have these in all capitals, but Eko Hamishai, Dylan Aldsley, and Tony Lamborn. Those are my guys. All right? Those are my guys. Uh, if, you know, I'm looking at this, uh, I really wish Henko wasn't rested last week. He might have needed it. But, uh, man, he showed everything about himself. That guy needs to start at six. And, you know, Tony Lamborn came in. Uh, he gets kicked in the face by Lopez. And how that's not a red card, I don't know. Uh, but it was yellow. And this was at a key moment when the U.S. was on their back foot. They were up 26-16 to 16, um, after Brazil having just scored a pe- on a penalty. And uh, there was, like, a tackle, and Lamborn took him down, and then uh, Lopez decides to bring his foot up and cock, it, cock his knee and then just put his cleats right into Lamborn's face. To be honest, I'm pretty sure Lamborn had a concussion with that because that was a big mule kick into his forehead. Uh, however, you know, going forward, you watch that match and they just sense the blood in the water as because they'd already lost Nick Savetta to a yellow. They were about uh, two minutes into that. So Lopez goes off with a yellow and the Eagles just start playing well with 14. They sort of weren't playing well with 14, whereas like in previous matches, they've played well with 14, which is how you have to play. That's how Tier 1 teams are. Those, like, they don't give anything up when 14 guys are on the pitch. You, know, you want to be the All Blacks to be relatively more efficient when there's 14 guys on the pitch rather than 15. Um, so that brings us uh, to our scrummaging. You know, who will haul among the law as a loose head option? MLR teams. I don't know who you are. You need to sign this dude. He should not be returning to Life West. Oh my gosh. Like, this guy showed what he was doing well when he all of a sudden had to play starter minutes against Georgia. And in the ARC during the, the matches he started, this one and the last one, uh, you know, he's he's played very well. So, you know, you, you really want to see that development and putting him in a, a high-performance environment will get more out of him. Very young prop, very talented, like what he's doing. Uh, you know, Fawcett, uh, first time starting. And I got nothing, man. Uh, I got nothing to say. Uh, love to see Peter Malcolm out there uh, getting after it, uh, showing his leadership in the second half. So we have four hooker options for first choice. <laughs> Wow, that's something else. Like that's been a that's been a hole. Um, then uh, tight head prop. Chris, I'm done. We're we're done. We're done. Uh, I just can't do it. Angus McClellan needs to start against uh, Uruguay and Patty Ryan. I hope, I dude, I hope you're ready to go because uh, you you need to go. It, it's time. Uh, and if you're not, can you get me 10 minutes? Uh, that's what I'm asking. All right. Uh, you know, selection policies being what they are, uh, we only have four back row options left in the pool. Not really sure what's up with that. Not really comfortable with that, but we need to pull in another flanker. Hopefully we have pulled in another flanker so that we can be prepared against Uruguay. Uh, and moving on to other MLR news. Uh, Rugby United New York had their final cuts after an exhibition against West Point this weekend. And so that's really cool. You got to see a basically semi-pro, about to be pro team, uh, you know, practice hard against, uh, you know, a varsity program. Uh, The uniforms that Rugby United's wearing were pretty sick. I'll say that. Um, And then they had like four major press articles and... We also had Nishant Nehariath, Neher- um, who is the Director of Operations for Rugby United New York, who was a rugby development officer in India, uh, on the Earful of Dirt podcast for uh, an episode, I think it was 16 or 17, of Lineouts. So check that out. And, uh, you know, what was it? 
like I said, three or four big articles in British and Irish press talking about Rugby United New York, and then James Kennedy was also on another podcast, which I forget it was. Hey, man, you need to be on EOD. EOD, you're full of dirt. Lineouts. Um, then we had the first trade ever in MLR history with Pakistanasi Afu going from Austin to Utah. Uh, not really sure what the assets were that were traded. Would like to know. Would like to have that codified at some point. I think we'll be able to get that uh, with Ear Full of Dirt pretty soon. Um, Seattle adds Lock Taylor Krumai. Krumai. Great player. He was playing down in the Waikato Premier Division in the club system uh, last uh, fall. So, you know, he was getting good game time. Saracen's product, University of Oregon product. He'll be good for Seattle. Um, Seattle also added partnerships with the Southside Regional Tourism Authority and the Southside Chamber of Commerce. So you're seeing like a confluence of Seattle resources come in. And then today was, what was it? So this week, Shane Skinner uh, stated that at the Seattle press launch that the league will have an international broadcast deal to be announced shortly. So all of my foreign fans of MLR, you're going to get what you wanted. You are going to be able to see Major League Rugby in the UK, in France, in New Zealand, etc. Um, and then last alibi is uh, anyone who... Went to the uh, Utah Warriors Coach Development Clinic on the 28th, which is, uh, you know, yesterday. Or on to the San Diego Legion press conference. Was it unable to make that also on Wednesday? Uh, you know, leave a comment. And uh, that's it for this week's MLR news and notes. Like, subscribe, comment. You can catch me at the Strobro and at Ear Full of Dirt.